Living in busy cities, we rarely think about what's happening below our feet. But every day, 45 million cubic meters of clean drinking water is lost in the world's water system. This quantity could serve the needs of nearly 200 million people. It's called non-revenue water when fresh water has been produced but cannot be built. Non-revenue water is the amount of water that we don't benefit from, you can say, when, when supplying water to uh, the citizens and the factories of a, uh, of a city. It's a little bit of a business term because it relates to the fact that uh, water for a water company is their source of income. And if there is an amount of water that they actually produce, they put into that network, but they don't get any money from it, then that's what we call uh, non-revenue water. In the future, securing enough water for a growing population requires a more efficient management of fresh water supply. The reason why it's so important to reduce the non-revenue water is of course that in, that, that in many cities we work is simply mega cities and there's a lot of, lot of people moving into the cities every year. And if we use uh, water and continue uh, the way it is, we will simply uh, lack 40% of the water resources in 2030. A non-revenue water program will focus on reducing urban water losses and increasing revenue. There's a lot of money to be saved and you can imagine that the water supply, the water utility, spend a lot of money for producing, treating, cleaning the water and pumping the water, but maybe up to half of it are never sold to the consumers. In Denmark, water consumption has decreased by 30% over the past 25 years. Due to political focus, Danish water utilities and companies have been motivated to develop new cost-efficient technologies and management systems. We have, in, together with universities, researchers and on private companies, reduced our loss of drinking water in our pipes to a minimum. I think it's nearly now 7% of loss of water in our pipes and in many cities, in the mega cities in, in Asia or in Latin America, they have a loss of 20-25% in their pipes. So many cities can learn from our solutions in Copenhagen and we are ready to share our knowledge. 80% of water pipes in Copenhagen are more than 60 years old. However, the non-revenue water level is below 7%. This proves that high levels of water losses are not correlated with the age of the pipes. Reducing non-revenue water is a matter of working smart rather than working hard. The key to success is a holistic master plan. Many places they don't meter the water, so they don't know how much water they are pumping out to the distribution system. And many places they don't have meters at the consumers or the meters are incorrect. So, so the information level about this is, is very, very low. And we have to start from scratch and, and collect uh, and the information and improve the, the level of knowledge about this. Every time we have to do that. Many places they don't know where the pipes are in the streets. You have to know how much water do we put into your system, how much water is used. And, and how much water has disappeared. So, so we have to work in, in, in minor areas, what we call district metered area, where, where we simply know exactly how much water people use and we know exactly how much water we put into the system. And of course we cannot have a, a zero not revenue water, but about 5% is in fact achieved in, in much of the cities where we have been worked. We have just also recently started a, a project in, in uh, Myanmar, in Yangon, where we are trying to, uh, to see what the problem is in a part of, of, of Yangon, a little area, but, but as we see right now, we estimate the, the non revenue water to be about uh, 70%. When you go long, uh, along the road, there are simply streams of water which is leaked out from, from the pipe system. So it's really a huge difference we can, we can make with our knowledge in, in, in this country. It's important to reduce the pressure because the higher pressure will always increase the, the, the level of leakage coming out from the pipe. Uh, so if, if there's a leakage, the higher pressure, the more water will come out. And uh, that's one very important uh, reason to, to regulate the pressure. And we can see by regulating the pressure, the leakage level is decreasing maybe 20, 30, 40 percent right away just by pressure management. And another reason to reduce the pressure is because we can save a lot of energy. 
The Scandinavian Nordic Center is a company specializing in the rehabilitation of pipe networks. With a minimum of disturbance compared to conventional methods, their solutions have proven very successful. Uh, our hardware is able to be operative in the ground, in line with the old pipes, not having to excavate the streets or the boulevards or the, the pavements and, 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 and so on. So actually able to replace the existing pipe network with no or very, very little excavation. We just finished a very, very high dense project in the city center of Rome, nearly 400 meters away from the Colosseum. Uh, a 25 to 30,000 car passing boulevards, four lanes, old, old shops, and with the same problem as many, many other places, an existing uh, concrete pipe four meters down, not possible at all to excavate that to shut down traffic or the infrastructure whatsoever. Uh, in one day's work, with all the setup and everything, we replaced that pipe to a new and modern um, pipe without disturbing the traffic or anything at all. It is 10 times faster to a way, way lower price. And as an example, an average uh, uh, reduction in cost of replacing a, a existing sewer or water pipe in a dense traffic boulevard is roughly 40 to 50% in cost savings. Uh, the translith methods with the static pipe bursting machines enable us to replace the existing pipes within hours. Uh, at DHI we've been uh, working in, uh, in Eastern Europe, for instance, with, uh, with wood utilities. Uh, one city is um, a city called Teplice in uh, the Czech Republic. Um, it's actually a city which is famous for its water and its spas and its uh, way of, of, of creating recreation f uh, through water. Uh, but it was also years back a, a city where um, a good amount of water was being lost, I think up to 40% of of the water being produced was uh, lost through leakages. And one of the problems they had there was insufficient pressure management. The city was not subdivided into pressure zones, uh, so uh, houses at high elevations, uh, in order to provide them with sufficient pressure, uh, houses at lower level had a surplus of pressure, and surplus of pressure means uh, high leakage. So subdividing the city into pressure zones, together with um, also monitoring, um, was some of the important instruments that was, uh, that was used to reduce leakages. And um, return of investment on, on, on such a campaign and such um, dealings with uh, reducing leakage has shown to be really short. A few years sometimes we're talking about.